We've got with us Prakash Agarwal, the ED and Deputy Head Research at Access Capital Limited, joining in on the show and also joining in Amit Ranjan, MD at Prospera Technologies. Gentlemen, morning. Good to have you on the show. Prakash, if I could start the discussion for you. Uh, do you think it's a given that it's time for an investor to take refuge in pharma? Although within pharma, does one need to be really selective? Yeah, so clearly the tailwinds are coming in the pharma sector from last uh, one, one and a half months. Uh, more so, relatively speaking, the earnings visibility is much stronger here, given that demand has always been there. On the supply side, I think pharma is an exceptionally done very well in terms of, uh, you know, keeping the facilities open, even the transportation is still going on. Uh, so the earning resilience will be much more uh, better. Uh, the other point I would like to highlight, especially for the exporters, uh, you know, with the a &D approvals improving as well as the facility getting clearance. In the past, what we have seen a drag on the EBITDA margin, cash flows and return ratios. With the uh, approvals coming in, uh, we do see the return ratios improving going forward. So, yes, uh, you know, we are... Uh, uh, you know, uh, we are positive on the sector and uh, on the stock specific, again, given the, you know, the there has been significant rally of 50% across uh, names, uh, we would be selective at these valuations. Sure. And Amit, to add to that, you know, one can safely say that there is an ease in stance by the US FDA as well. Case in point being just the EIR, which uh, DRL has got for its Rika Kulim facility. Yes. Yes, we have to look from uh, two perspectives. One is the regulatory easing of the uh, FDA because of their inability to come to the site. And, you know, the so, uh, FDA never decimates an organization. It all, always wants you to improve. And this is something where they have been approved, doing a risk-based approval. Now, see, at the same time, when you saw the, the uh, EIR coming for Dr. Reddy, yesterday you saw uh, CIPLA losing on the patent war on the, on the oncology drug. So, you know, uh, uh, it has to be a mix of both. We also need to get more para for filings, win more patent uh, battles. Uh, because, see, being a listed company, it, it comes into your news because uh, the FDA has more exposure to the listed bigger companies in terms of sourcing good medicines for the U.S. At least five warning letters have come to Indian small companies from March 15 to yesterday. So it's not that FDA is going to relax anything on that. The only thing is they are, they are releasing based on risk. And I would have been very happy if FDA would have approved some blockbuster, especially injectable in these COVID times, uh, which is not happening actually. Okay, fair enough. Amit, uh, let me also, uh, you know, bring you into the conversation uh, in terms of really whether or not uh, you feel pharma is looking particularly attractive right now. Uh, you know, we're seeing steady growth. So do, you, do you see, of course, outperformance uh, perhaps, uh, you know, on the upside? Do you also see any kind of limits there? How do you feel the trend's going to shape up? See, I tell you, see, Yes, pharma is going, uh, it, it has to grow because, you know, the, the, a lot of medicines requirements have grown up across the world and naturally. But let me tell you one thing, the euphoria that is going on for the number of EIRs that have received or the number of ANDA which has been approved on an expedited way, the growth in pharma is going to happen. But fortunately for India, because of the rule relaxations by FDA as well as EU, this growth is, is going to be more democratic now. So the big is not going to be giant. The small is going to be become a mid 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 cap or a mid cap become, become a big, but it's bigger ones are not going to become giant because because of the relaxation of the US FDA's uh, on the in its in its physical audit or, or, or compliance policies now it, it looks like in coming days uh, you will have you will see a spate of non-listed pharma company grabbing a lot of good US and European business. Sure. Okay, so let's let's sort of uh, drill that down to the kind of companies as well that you see benefiting the most. We've got that US FDA boost coming in for Dr. Reddy's, of course, so this morning. But we're also seeing a whole number of them that are perhaps now beating some of those tailwinds and starting to emerge. See, companies, big pharma, which, uh, which are very well integrated with respect to their APIs and that too uh, on, a, on a bigger, bigger molecules like Dr. Reddy's, as you saw, uh, Arbindo Pharma, Sun Pharmaceuticals, 
uh, you know these are the com- uh, these are the companies which are going to do extremely well uh, despite having some of their regulatory issues with them but as long as the big pharma is backward integrated with respect to blockbuster molecules uh, they will they will have a fantastic growth both in the indian market as well as the us otherwise players who are stand alone anda you know um, to name some few of the company like you know you have a silpa medicare or a kaplan point or ajanta pharma uh, for that matter probably may not be giving you that growth because api is the key in terms of you no know, the us fda get relaxations being used more on api approvals more on and expedited approvals and people who have api controls at their hand will uh, grow to a different level I'm at morning. Nikunj also joining in. I have a simple follow-up question. Between March and now, what has changed? Everyone in market is getting excited about pharma. Some are saying that India is going to be the destination to produce all the antiviral medicine. Some are saying that US FDA right now is occupied in dealing with COVID uh, cases, so they will not be that stringent on uh, drug uh, administration as well as factory approvals. some are saying look the consolidation has already happened and now it is the survival of the fittest so whether it is teva from israel or dr eddy from india or a watson from america or for that matter a sun pharma from india these are the companies who will survive what is the right picture is the pharma rally only because of covid tailwind or there is a genuine turnaround which is happening in the pharma companies after two or three years of pain okay so there there, there are two aspects to answer, to answer this one is uh, led to the disappointment of everybody who is in, in the euphoria of indian pharma let me tell you that as i the smaller companies who are in, who are in the cmo they are going to get affected because everybody looks from the us perspective with the european commission coming out with a with a with a bill or, or a proposal to reduce cmo activity in india i am telling you that number of indian pharma companies are going to get affected because they are not going to get cmo business let me tell you another information yesterday italy became the largest cmo revenue wise in the entire europe uh, beating germany in the in the in the revenues you know there are something something that has radically got ch- change in covid everybody in india thought that every indian pharma company makes a covid medicine that's what that was a euphoria and second was that we did some regulatory mistakes and the biggest mistake i can tell you because i am part of the fraternity is is the is, is the ban on the exports for two and a half months for molecules like paracetamol and other life saving drugs this has re- literally devastated the european trust on india and more than the american companies or the uh, the american administration relying on the indian medicine europe will definitely see to it that lot of api manufacturing and lot of cmo manufacturing will shift to the european side and they have a capability to do that okay prakash how would you differentiate between the pharma top layer right now because each company has a unique ability sipla some would say is semi regulated and largely does generics uh, dr reddy they have a strong presence in europe and they managed to get eia uh, they've managed to get their plants in order sun pharma very highly r and d focus orvindo pharma Sandoz uh, suspense is over, but the injectable business is solid. Which is one particular pharma category where you think that the natural tailwind is there, and which is the Indian company which is best to really capture that? So on the large caps, uh, we are positive on names like Cadilla, Cipla, Aurobindo, and Dr. Reddy's versus a Lupin or a Sun Pharma. Uh, the point being. you know uh, and i would just like to add uh, to the previous question you asked like you know what has really changed uh, in the last uh, one month so one is uh, clearly the demand environment is very strong in terms of you know across the globe so be it india row and us also we have seen some supply opportunities uh, uh, from uh, many other countries because there are shortages just to give a case in point you know april 19 there were only 18 products under shortage and currently if you see the shortage list under us fda there are 105 products uh, which are under shortage so uh, the us generic business which saw a double digit price erosion which is now come down to 4% and so you are seeing a lower price erosion a higher volume uptake 
and so the visibility of earnings for an exporter in companies like a you know a Kerala, a Sipla, or Dr. Reddy's for that matter, and Aurobindo, they are pretty strong. Uh, so I think the exporters are clearly you will see the earnings uh, improving for sure. And to top it all, you have currency tailwinds which have moved up by 10%. Uh, so demand environment, supply opportunity, and currencies, uh, these are the three major drivers. And, and last point, which uh, I earlier mentioned, is that, you know, earlier these things were, uh, you know, pulling down my margins because the R&D continued, my CAPEX continued, but slower uh, uh, A&D approvals led to my overall uh, return ratios being down. Now with A&D approvals coming, facilities getting clearer, uh, even there has been cost saving initiatives which has brought r and d down and other operating uh, uh, expenses down so you will see an operating leverage playing out uh, for most uh, exporters and especially the large caps All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us and for taking us through um, your view on the pharma space currently and how it's emerging as a leader in the current market.